Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more of the Super Mario Party playthrough. I've been kind of advertising this video for a bit, but uh, this is the video where we're basically going to be going through and playing all the mini games that we haven't played yet um, in Super Mario Party. Uh, there are not too many of these. Uh, just looking through here right now, uh, we got 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 mini games we haven't played yet. And the funny thing is, we will play them all eventually anyway, because uh, Challenge Road, which is the minigame island equivalent that we'll be doing later, um, that will actually play all the minigames in this game regardless. But uh, still though, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what to expect, and just to kind of talk about each of the games and what I think about them, I think that this would be a good way to do this. Plus it also just kind of shows off the nature of free play as well. And uh, for the purpose of free play, as I normally do for these videos in the past, I just pick the uh, four Hat Brothers. I'm playing as Mario. I figure if I'm going to use Mario, I'll use them for the most uh, generic and basic mode of the game. <laughs> because he is that boring. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into free play. Uh, so the first games we'll be focusing on are the... Uh, four player mini games. You can also just look at all the mini games right here. And you can also just pick a random choice if there's a game you just don't really care to play, you just want to play random mini games, you can do that. Uh, but yeah, if you uh, use the SL and SR buttons, you can basically sh sift through all the categories here. Uh, there are five four player or free for all mini games that we haven't played yet. So uh, we're going to be first checking those out. So. Uh, the first game we're going to be playing is this one right here. This is called Slopperazzi. And it's a shame we haven't played this, because this is one of the best games in Mario Party, or Super Mario Party, in my opinion. It's kind of similar to a game that's in Mario Party 10. But basically, you just have to fight the other players and get in front of the uh, cameraman. And whoever is the most prominent in the picture will get the most points. You do this for a couple of rounds, and it's just a very fun and silly concept. And it's kind of nice that they actually like showcase like some of the pictures for you, like after you're done, so you can kind of see some like very silly and funny poses and stuff of that nature. <laughs> Look at Mario like getting ready to punch Waluigi in the face. <laughs> But yeah, that's the basic idea of this game. It's just very silly and very fun. And if you have your, uh, um, if you press the capture button on your Nintendo Switch, uh, or your Joy-Con controllers, you, know, you can kind of get some of these, uh, snapshots and just save them on your SD card or just your Switch uh, hard drive in general. Come back and have a nice laugh at them. Also showcase them on social media, too. But yeah, this, this game's really fun. This game's a fun game to play. Look at Luigi right there. Again, you can just get some really silly poses. Really? I... Eh, I guess I wasn't in the center of that. Oh, well, I don't care about winning these games because, again, we're just showcasing them. We're not necessarily trying to uh, get victory here. But yeah, that's, that's a really fun game. Probably one of my favorite games in this collection. Shame we haven't played it yet. Um, so let's go ahead and move through here, um, looking for the next one we haven't played yet. Uh, Lost in the Shuffle, this is one we haven't played. Uh, so this is basically a shell game, but on mounds and mounds of sugar. Find the doll with the most mini dolls inside. So it's basically, pick which one is the correct one, and that's... Uh, that's basically what you do here. That's really all there is to it. It's a pretty fun minigame, so you have to just follow along once uh, they start shuffling. Whoever picks the one that has the most wins. I think it's the second one. And like, once someone selects one, you can't select that one anymore, so you have to choose a different one. But yeah, that's pretty much this game. It's alright. It's not one of my favorites. I can at least follow along most of the time. But there are times where it does go pretty fast and sometimes you miss it. It's, you know, no eyes are perfect. But yeah, it's an alright game. I don't mind it too much. You can also set it as a favorite if you want, which I should have done that from uh, Slopperazzi, but um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. 
Let's go ahead and move on to the next mini game. We have Cruisin for a Bruisin. This is another game I actually do really like too. Uh, run from the oncoming bruisers. Be careful of the pipes. Bruisers might be hiding inside. So yeah, you basically choose a route. Uh, one route will have boxes that you'll have to navigate around. But um, honestly, even if you pick wrong, it's not too bad as long as you just pay attention to what you're doing and just, you know, carefully navigate yourself around the boxes. My strategy for this game is just to stay on one route the whole time. Because sometimes the other players, uh, in the confusion of switching routes, they might mess themselves up. And this way, like, you can at least always be assured to be in the lead whenever you uh, start a certain path. But yeah, this game's pretty cool. I know I play this in kind of a boring fashion because I never move lanes, but... Hey, the name of the game is Winning here, so... Yeah, we'll be good. This is actually one of the games that's also in the uh, online Mario-thon, or just the Mario-thon in general. So, uh, you know, if you uh, play it there, um, you can actually go on for longer once all the other players get eliminated, and you get a higher score for as long as you make it, so... It's a good game to actually put in that category. Okay, so next game we're going to do is, I believe, Heir to a Fortune. I hate this game. <laughs> this game is not very good. I'm not a fan of this one. But, um, take the most coins. If two players jump to the same cloud, neither gets any coins. So it's basically, choose what you think will give you the most coins and won't have other people jumping for them. It's a giant mind game. You can never know what the correct answer is going to be. See, like... I, I was like, okay, going for the three is a bad idea, because all the other players are just going to go for it. No, no, they decided, no, well, we'll go for the... All. Wario's like, I'll go for the two coins as well. And then no one got the three coin. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I just don't like this game. And like that, despite getting nothing in the first two rounds, I'm in the lead. Um, can I change? I picked the middle. Oh, no, I, I, okay, you know what? You can actually change direction. If you select a direction, you can actually put yourself in another direction and kind of throw off your competition a little bit. Um, damn, Wario got the huge mountain of coins there. But yeah, that's pretty much that game. It's pretty much luck-based, depending on what your opponents do. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan at all. And the last uh, four-player game we haven't played yet, we haven't played Lightning Round. Grab the most coins, you'll lose coins if the Sumo Bros. Spark Strike you. So, another coin collectathon. We actually, like, didn't play two of these, which is interesting. But yeah, it's, it's coin collecting. I feel like this is also, like, incredibly similar to, like, other minigames and other Mario Party games, like... I feel like there's always a game, like, kind of like this. I mean, even even going back to the first Mario Party, like, Hammer Drop is kind of similar to this. It's just... You know, they're obviously not dropping hammers here. They're dropping sumo energy. I thought there was, like, a one-coin difference between each placement. That's That's pretty funny how that worked out. Uh, but yeah, those are all the uh, four-player minigames. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Um, I'm pretty sure we played the rest of these. I've been keeping track. And I've also been keeping track based on the list that you guys have been keeping as well. I know I said you guys didn't have to do that. I know some people continue to do that. And I appreciate that. I do. It gave me a way to second check. But if there is a game that uh, I didn't play for some reason, like I said, we'll get to it in Challenge Road. We'll play it there anyway. And um, also, if there is a game that uh, we play again that we have already seen, well, whatever. It's extra content, so <laughs> not a big deal. Uh, let's move on to the one versus threes. We actually didn't play a lot of these, and it's kind of a shame because there are some good ones here that we didn't get to check out. At least, no, no, like, three of these are good. There's four of them we haven't seen. The, the last one's not great, but um, three of them are pretty good. Uh, the first game we have is Dust Buddies. 
Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and work against the team of three. Why not? But yeah, we have a cleaning game. And, you know, I actually didn't realize this until I started playing, like, a lot of Mario Party with my friend Bowser Girl. But why are cleaning minigames, like, so good in Mario Party? I feel like that's... That's something that you see, like, way too often. Like, why are there good cleaning minigames? It's like... The game's trying to tell you that household chores are fun. <laughs> At least Mario Party makes them more fun. Uh, but yeah, basically you're trying to clean this area. One player has a bigger vacuum and has more control, while the other three have smaller vacuums, but they have to kind of work in coordination with each other. So you just try to see who vacuums up the mo most dust. It's pretty simple. I like to use the single players. I try to cut into uh, their territory a little bit. And then I double back, since I have kind of like more control over where I go. If I miss a few little dust piles here and there, that's fine. Because again, it's about getting the most. It's not about getting like everything. Which I think I very, very easily did that. Hell yeah. Ooh, yeah. We did it, guys. We did it. We did the thing. Let's pick another mini game and play some other cool things. We have Sign Steal Deliver. I actually don't play as the one player in this one very often. Uh, but yeah, deliver as many packages as you can. The team side can each carry up to two packages at a time. The solo player can use the drone to steal packages from rivals. So. Yeah, that, that's basically what this is. You uh, try to uh, grab packages and uh, take them to your truck. And you can also steal packages from other players if you so choose. I wouldn't rely on, rely on stealing though, because sometimes you might spend more time trying to steal than you are getting packages. But uh, that's basically what it is. It's a pretty cool concept for a game. Stop. Although I will say, playing as the team of three, it can be kind of tricky sometimes. Because, uh, I don't know what it is, but like going up and down the stairs can feel kind of strange sometimes. So just be very careful with that. The, the computer players aren't really taking advantage of uh, carrying more than one package, but that's fine. I mean, that's going to help me out more than them. I'm basically just doing what I can to get as many as I can, because they're going to get a pretty big haul here. I actually got 13, which is honestly a pretty good score for just getting packages by myself. Oh, no. Yeah, that, game, that game's pretty fun. It's not one of my favorites of the 1 versus 3 category, but it's a good one. It's not definitely far from the worst one. It's kind of middle of the road for me. Uh, the next game we have is the Bopping Spree. Remember the remember Sockem Boppers? Anyone have those as a kid? I love sock and bombers. Uh, so you punch the targets as soon as they light up. The solo player gets to be in the middle, so they have less distance to cover. But uh, the team of three are obviously working together, so they can cover different sides of the area and, you know, go pretty fast in that regard. I'd say this is a pretty balanced minigame, I'd say. Maybe the team of three has a slight advantage. But not by much. Yeah, I, I, I can feel the uh, I can feel the one versus three balance at least a little bit in this one. Unlike most of the Mario Party one one versus three mini games, which are terrible. <laughs> Seriously, why are one versus three games so bad in Mario Party one? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much bopping spree. 
But yeah, that game's all, that game always makes me rem rem remember Sockum Boppers. Just those huge, like, um, not really boxing gloves. They were inflatable gloves that were like, you know, they they didn't hurt if you got hit with them. It was just basically a way where kids could punch each other without any penalty. <laughs> okay. Uh, pick another minigame. Now we have, like, probably my least favorite one versus three minigame. We have Drop Quiz. Um, I'm going to be on the team of three for this one, just because uh, the, the, the single player doesn't really do much in this one. But this is a memory game where you have basically three questions, and you have to basically study the uh, picture in front of you, and then pick the answer that uh, correlates with the question that the single player asks. So you have to pay attention to like how many um, creatures there are, what creatures there are, what fruit they're carrying. So we have appen, a apple, lemon, pineapple. So we saw three fruit, so the answer is three. There are only two answers at first, but they add an additional answer every time. Wario, come back over here. You're gonna die. I can't believe it. Wario's actually gonna die. <laughs> Bye, Wario. Wah! Oh my god! Okay. Uh, orange, apple, apple, pineapple, orange, orange, lemon. Uh, six or seven? I don't think it's five. I think it's seven. I think I've messed this up. Yeah, it was seven. Damn it. Okay, well, we lost. But yeah, they, they, they give a third question, which has four answers, and it's the most ridiculous one, because they, they switch out, like, a lot of characters, like, between Toads and Koopas, and you have to pay attention to which ones are which. Some of them won't carry any fruit. It's, it's, a, it's a very difficult game when you get like settings like that. I'm gonna go ahead and say that now. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, that one. So uh, that's all the one versus three minigames. So now we're gonna move on to the team minigames. There's actually only... Um, hmm. I don't remember doing Robo Uprising, but uh, it's not on my list, so I guess we did do it. Like I said, if we didn't, we'll see it in Challenge Road, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but the first game we're going to be playing is Pull It Together. Yeah, I'll team up with uh, Luigi here. Well, Mario Bros versus the Wario Not Really Bros. So for this game, it's, it's Tug of War, believe it or not. Um, you don't have to rotate the control stick, though. You just have to mash the uh, X button. So that's something. But uh, it can be pretty hard. Um, yeah, so you basically have to pull them up to the center and line. But yeah, it can be pretty tough because mashing the buttons on the Joy-Con, not easy. It's not easy to do. So just uh, keep that in mind. Maybe we did do Robo Uprising. I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. I've actually recorded so much of this game because I've just been having so much fun playing it and recording this project. So <laughs> sorry if that's, you know, kind of obnoxious if I don't exactly remember. But yeah, I don't have this on my list and I've been checking with you guys. So if it's not on here, then, then it's not on here. Uh, the next game we have is uh, Bumper Brawl. Hey, it's like bumper balls, but uh, instead of riding the balls, we're inside the balls, and it becomes a chaotic mess. This is the kind of chaos, though, I like. Like, this is this is fun Mario Party chaos. Like, I, like I, it sucks that I fell off in the practice round right there, but it doesn't matter because, yeah, the basic goal is bump your rivals out of the arena. You hold the button, you can charge and give, like, a powerful charge to knock them off. <clears throat> and, like, it basically comes down to which team will win. It's, like, absolute chaos. This is the way, like, a Bumper Balls game should be. It shouldn't be, like, um... 
how it is in other games. But yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I much prefer this over bumper balls in Mario Party 1 and 2. It's just a cool idea for a game, you know? Oh, I noticed the Luigi's gone. No, Money Mole, go! Can Money Mole beat Bowser? What are they doing? <laughs> Ah, Bowser won. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing there. They were just kind of like bumping into each other for a little while. <laughs> ah, Bowser wins. Bowser wins again. <clears throat> okay, and the last uh, team minigame we have to play is Get Over It. <clears throat> this is a very simple minigame. Don't get bowled over. Grolls might roll in from the left or right. You just jump over the enemy. That's really all it is. Um, it can be kind of confusing because if like your um, allies mess up, you might accidentally jump in rhythm with them and screw up yourself. So you have to like pay more attention to the enemy and not so much your teammates. And of course, I need it. <laughs> Our team's not looking so good. But, uh, we have... It's two versus two. Oh, it's two versus one. Dead. Ah. I knew that Luigi jumped way too early on that. Winners. But yeah, those are all the team minigames. That didn't take too long. So uh, we just have one more, or one more category to go through, and that's the rhythm mini games. There are three games we haven't played here. Uh, there is first one is rhythm and bruise. I feel oh, you know what? <laughs> I need to do something evil. Give me a moment. <laughs> I need to do this. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I know this is gonna seem really cruel, but... <laughs> it's also, like, it's kind of endearing in a way, because, like... Basically, the idea of this game is... Um, oh, you select difficulty? Um, we'll do... I'll do just normal. But, um, slam the moles to the rhythm. And, like, look at Monty Mole. He's, like, in such distress because it's his... They're Monty Moles. Like, I understand why he's like that. He should be like that. But, like, just that little touch, I think, is great. Like, that's why I say I love the wholesome nature of this game. Like, how expressive they make all the characters. It's, it's just really neat. I did win. I uh, won with Luigi, so that's something. Winners. Sorry, Monty Mole, but it had to be done. <laughs> Just the fact that he's like, I don't want to hit my mole, brethren. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, the next game we have is Fiddler on the Hoof. Uh, this game can be kind of tricky because uh, I think it's fairly straightforward on this game until the very end. Basically, just have to shake the um, Joy-Con like when you hit those circles. Think of this like Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero with horses.
I did really good on that one. <laughs> I did really good. But yeah, that game, I actually do like this game. I just, the, the ending can be, like, if you mess up with the ending, you're going to be losing a lot of points, is basically the problem with that one. That's the main issue with that one. And uh, the last game we have is Clearing the Table, and this is probably my least favorite of the rhythm games. I don't know what it is, I just do not have the timing right for this one. Like, it's... For some reason, I just can't get this one right. You pull the ta tablecloth to the rhythm. I mean, it seems pretty obvious, but like, sometimes they go really fast and you can kind of easily get off the rhythm. Yeah, I, I did terrible on that one. I am not looking forward to doing this on Challenge Road. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's pretty much that. That's uh, all the minigames uh, we haven't seen yet in uh, Super Mario Party. I'm going to try this one again just to see if I can get the rhythm a little better. But yeah, this is pretty much um, all the minigames we haven't played in this game. The slow ones are easy. I did better that time, but yeah. It's just a matter of, like, for the ones that go fast, like, you don't want to do it too fast. You have to get, kind of wait till, like, I guess the lights come on, and, like, you're kind of given that signal to pull. But again, it can be very finicky, so I'm just not really sure. And you know what, since I'm not entirely sure, and, like, I don't think it matters how long this video is, I'm just gonna play another random game really quick. Just to make sure, like, again, I'm pretty sure we have played this, but... I'll play Robo Uprising here too. We I mean, pretty much played two, the Robo one. River Survival game. Yay, we won. Okay. We probably have played that before, but in case we hadn't, we took care of it right there. It's a very short mini game anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Uh, next video, we'll be taking a look at the other mini game mode that we have available to us. Uh, well, we won't be taking a look at the Mario-thon. Like I said, we'll, uh, we'll play that uh, later um, when we go to the online Mario-thon. But uh, next time we'll be checking out Square Off. Uh, we don't need to look at view records because it's literally just like looking at your Mario-thon and minigame records. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, take a look at Square Off next. Should be very simple. Should be a pretty short video. So uh, don't expect it to be too lengthy. But yeah, that's uh, going to be it. So this has been Sun Kirby. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time for Square Off. Later, folks.